In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at uh, four different probability problems that uh, use permutations to uh, uh, in the calculations for the probability amount. And in a couple of cases, I'm actually going to show you how to do this uh, without using permutations, without just using uh, regular probabilities. So a couple of different ways for a couple of these to solve them. So the first one, um, we're going to look at it just with probabilities. And the, there is a way to do this first one with permutations too, but we're not going to bother that with the first one. So with the first one, you're given this uh, pop multiple choice quiz. Uh, since you haven't had the opportunity to study, you only feel confident that you have a 50% chance to get any given question correct. And there's four questions of the quiz. So the question is, what is the chance you get all the questions correct? So you can think of each of these questions as an independent event. What you get right or wrong on the first question shouldn't have any influence on the next one. So there'd be a 0.5 or 50% chance of getting the first one correct times there's a 0.5 chance of getting the next one correct times a 0.5 chance of getting the third one correct and the same with the fourth. So the calculation would actually be 0 0.5 to the power of 4 which is about 0 0.0625. Now remember it's to the power of 4 because these are multiplied. Um, that is not the same. I'm just going to bring my calculator over here. Okay, so we're actually doing 0.5 to the power of 4. Now, that is not the same as multiplying 0.5 by 4. Okay, remember probabilities cannot be over 1. So if you get a 2 here, that would should tell you something's wrong. Okay, all the 0.5s are multiplied together. So it's 0.5 to the power of 4. So there's only about a, that would be as a percent, about 6.25% chance you get all the questions correct. That, be, that would actually be the same chance that you get them all wrong, because if there's a 50% chance you get anyone right, there's also a 50% chance you can get them wrong. So the same calculation for getting all four incorrect. So if those two probabilities are only about 6.25%, then you're probably more likely to get somewhere between 1 and 3 correct. Those would be more likely outcomes. Example number 2. Five people line up randomly for a picture. So the question is, what is the probability that they are in alphabetical order from left to right? So the number of the sample space would be 5 factorial, or 5 per mute 5, because we're taking five people and arranging them all in a line. So that would be 120 ways. It's 5 factorial also, if you think of the counting problem, there's 5 ways to put a person here, we've used 1, so times there's 4 ways to put a person here, we've used 2, so times there's 3 ways here, 2 and 1, which is 5 factorial, or 120. Or 5 per mute 5. Now, so the probability that in alphabetical order is, and so let's say we'll take 5 random names. Brooklyn, Erica, Jade, Lexi, and Noah. Okay, so we've got 5 names, notice I did put them in alphabetical order, and, but if we arrange those in any other order, you know, if we just were to switch Lexi and Noah, put Noah here and Lexi in the end, then they're no longer in alphabetical order. See, there's, for any given five people, there's only one alphabetical order. So if there's 120 ways to arrange these, 119 of them are not in alphabetical order, and only one is. So that's why the chance would actually just be one in 120 because there's only one way to arrange any five names in alphabetical order. Flipping over to uh, example three on the second page, uh, Kim draws four cards one after the other from a deck. So the question is, what is the chance she draws an ace, then two jacks, and a king in that order? Well, the size of the sample space is quite large. It'd be the number of ways she can select four cards from 52 which would be 52 factorial over 48 factorial. If you remember the uh, permutation formula, one way to evaluate this is it's going to be this factorial on top and this minus this factorial in the denominator. So we could actually do 52 factorial divided by 48 factorial which is 6,497,400. Of course, if you have the permutation function on your calculator, you can use it too to get exactly the same thing. So, 
that works out to be almost six and a half million. Now, um, the next thing to calculate using permutations here is the number of ways she can do this. So the number in, we'll call it A, the event that she actually does this, uh, there are, let's do the ace first. There's four aces and she's selecting one of them. So it'd be four permute one ways of selecting the ace times the way to select the two jacks next would be four permute two. There's four jacks in the deck and she's selecting two of them times and the king there'd be four permute one ways to select the on, the only king she's getting so four permute one would just be four um, remember the way to write it as a product of numbers is you start with four and there's only one number so that's why it's four the four permute two if you use that uh, idea is you're going to start with the four times and the next number would be three and there's only two numbers in the product, so 4 times 3 would be 12. So that's why this is 12. And then the 4 permute 1, the king in the end, is 4 again. So 4 times 12 times 4 is 192. And so the probability that she gets an ace, two jacks, and then a king would be 192 out of this about 6.5 million number. So it's pretty small. 0 0.00002955. If we round that to three here uh, and write it as a percent, it would actually be three one thousandths of one percent. So it's not too likely she's going to do this. Uh, an, an alternate way to do this is just with probabilities. Uh, we the getting an ace and a jack and a jack and a king. So uh, the probability she gets, and you can think of this as actually con conditional probabilities. Uh, the first one, the the probability of getting an ace first would be 4 to 52, because there's four aces of the 52 cards. Now remember, we've taken one card out, so for the next one, the probability of getting a jack next would be 4 over 51. We've used one card here. It's not going back in. So there's 4 to 51 chances of getting a jack second. Times, there'd be three chances in 50 of getting a second jack. Uh, we've used one more card, so the 51 becomes 50. One jack's been used. There's only three left here. And then the probability of getting a king in the end would be 4 out of 49. So um, the 4 times 3 times 4 times 4 is 192. The 52 times 51 times 50 times 49 is this number. So exactly the same calculation. Okay, so last question here, the birthday problem. This is actually a class, classical uh, uh, problem and probability that's uh, used a lot, especially when you have a fairly large class. And the question is, what's the probability that in the class of 27 students, and I chose 27 because in my Danish management class I have, actually have 27 students, that no two students have the same birthday? So first of all, the sample space. Uh, the number of ways that you could, you could think of this as 27 independent trials because there's 27 people. And each one of them has a choice of 365 different days they could have the birthday on. So I have 365 ways of getting uh, my birthday being times there's 365 ways that your birthday could be times there's 365 ways that a third person's could be, etc. for all 27 students. Now I'm not going to ev evaluate that number right now because it is so huge. Okay, And we want to calculate that probably that no two people have the same birthday. So we want all 27 of those birthdays to be on different days. So the number of ways you can do that would be there's 365 days and we're selecting 27 different ones. So that would be 365 permute 27. Still a very large number. So let's not evaluate that right now. I'll get into that in a moment. So the probability that everybody has a, pro uh, a birthday, let's say a probability, on a different day of the year would be this number of ways it can well, cannot happen, uh, out of the size of the sample space. And here's uh, the calculation in my, my digital graphing calculator. 365 per mute 27 over 365 to the power 27. So it's about 37%. Uh, as I said, these numbers are very large. Now, I'll get into this in, in a second here. If you actually evaluate those numbers, 365 permute 27 or 365 to the power 27, they're very, very large numbers. And just I'll get to this in a moment here. Uh, 
this is actually 5.67 times 10 to the power of 68 and the 365 to 27 is about 1.5 times 10 to the power of 69 so very very large numbers numbers we don't have names for those numbers uh, it's it's like those numbers make numbers like a trillion or a billion really look small because they're so large so this is actually a five and then with 68 more decimal places here after it. That's how large they are. So notice that the probability is 37% chance, approximately, that no two people had the same birthday. So the actual probability that two or more of the same birthday would be about 63, almost 64%. So there's actually, when you get a, a group this large, it's actually starting to be fairly likely that two or more people have the same birthday. Uh, notice that the only thing you really need here to calculate this is the number of people. So it's also always going to be 365 permute the number of people over 365 to the power of the number of people. So if you actually go to, to uh, larger groups, let's say to a group of 40 people, and here's my calculations, um, you might not be able to do this in your scientific calculator because the numbers get too big. So 365 permute 40 over 365 to the power of 40 is uh, around 11%. So there's getting close to a 90% chance if you have a group of 40 people that two or more people have the same birthday. If you have a group of 50 people, it's down to 3% chance that nobody has the same birthday. So just getting pretty likely that somebody, some two people or more have the same birthday. In fact, for a, fifth, a group of 55, it's down to 1% chance that nobody has the same birthday. So if you have a group of 55 people or more, you're, you're down to, you're up to like a 99% chance or better that two or more people do have the same birthday. It gets quite likely with a large group of people. And that's the end of the video.